Hey guys, it's Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about uh, the pluses of submitting coins with a coin dealer. Um, what, why it's a good thing for a collector to do it, but why it's a good thing for the coin dealer also. We'll be talking about that in this video, so we hope you enjoy and stay tuned. So, a little bit of backstory on this submission. We ended up sending a lot of Indian head cents in to uh, PCGS for a customer of ours that we met about four months ago. His name is Jason. And so, the cool thing about submitting coins for uh, a collector is that when they give you coins and you send them off, when you get them back in your hand, you're able to make offers to them if they're willing to sell them. The cool thing about this experience was I actually, you know, we actually sent these in. I felt pretty confident about the coins. And when they came back, Jason was like, hey, you know, I could get them back. I could try to sell them for a little bit more. You know, I could squeeze them for what they're worth and I could sell them individually. Or, Drew, you're there. You have the coins in your hand. You have the money to, do, to pick these up. Do you want them? And so, seeing it from a, a customer perspective, uh, Jason was you know getting a, a kind of a quick buck and I think a lot of these he bought pretty conservatively and pretty cheap and then on my end you know I, I don't have to go out and go to different shops or buy as much stuff at shows if it's really not there so on both sides of you know on both sides of this deal it was just opportunities for both of us and at the end of the day it'll help you and your customer or if you are the collector and you want to sell something it could help you and the coin dealer and it really just builds a good relationship. So if Jason ever wants to send anything else in, it could really, uh, you know, giving my expertise and what I believe the coins would grade at would really help him. And he doesn't have to spend $250 on a PCGS membership. So, uh, but let's show you guys some coins. We actually sent these in, like I said, about four months ago, and now we're getting them finally back. And we, the grades actually were better than I thought they would be. And so, yeah, we hope you enjoyed this grade review. All right, so Jason really did hook us up with a lot of nice coins. We ended up sending in a few as well ourselves. This grade kind of surprised me a little bit. Up first is 1888 Morgan Dollar grade MS60. We ended up sending this one in because, um, you know, it's just nice to get an older, see what it would grade. As you can see by the right side, the luster's a little bit suppressed, but the color is pretty nice. The strike is very weak, as you can see. Um, just a lot of rubbing as well. Um, just the combination of both really set this coin back from being anything higher. Never actually got an MS60 on anything, and it's kind of cool to get it. And so, just an interesting grade for sure. Taking a look at the uh, the re the obverse here, you can kind of see like this almost sheen right down the face, right here, and that's kind of cool. And the reason why that's like that, I think, is because I don't know if a coin hit up against it, and there's a lot of just uh, issues there or is it just rubbing uh, we also have some pretty pretty hard weakness in the hair here and a lot of rubbing on the hair too um, and then when you kind of look at the out out in the fields there's just a lot going on and so that's what it all added up to for me I think that this coin's pretty cool and uh, yeah pretty exciting coin but I think that's where the grade landed I thought this one would be like an AU58 or something but uh, it ended up grading MS60 which was kind of interesting Here's probably the coolest coin of the batch so far. This is 1908S, which is the semi key date Indian head scent. This one was graded MS65 Red Brown. And as you can see, there's a lot more red than brown here. Um, and when you take a look kind of take a look kind of up close, I mean everything's just full. Luster is pretty nice. And uh, there's a few spots. Uh, you know, a few kind of brownish spots here in front of the face. Kind of out in the field is what you expect. And uh, the, the, what's kind of interesting about this coin is that Jason actually sold us a 1908S in MS65 Red Brown when he sent us these raw coins four months ago. And so he sent me that uh, MS65 Red Brown. He's like, hey, this one might do the same exact grade. Can you send it in for me? And so we bought that one a few months ago, like I said. And then this one ended up uh, going MS65 Red Brown too. So it's kind of a cool story. 
like I said, nice luster on the coin. And when you flip it over, no distracting spots, really just kind of a little brown in the fields. And I think the one that uh, he sold me had like the highest selling comps out there. Um, like we ended up selling that coin to somebody else and they sent it to CAC and it, and it received a CAC sticker. And then that one sold on Heritage just a few months ago and it's kind of, I think it's the most recent and the highest, uh, the highest comp for a 1908S and MS65 Red Brown. So cool story with this coin. I think it's a beautiful piece. Are you guys enjoying our PCGS unboxing? If you are, please leave a like. Comment your thoughts on the grade so far. We would love your feedback. What coins have you been submitting to PCGS lately? We would all, all that stuff is really important to us. We'd like to talk to you about it. And subscribe down below. If you guys want to submit coins with us, help you guys send some stuff in, just message us on our website or send me a text. I'll have my phone number below. But let's get back to today's video. I'm very excited to add that to the inventory. Up next is a 1909S, which is a key date Indian had sent. This one was great damage, and I, I know it would be, but it's good to get it authenticated. And uh, just to tell people that you have it. So if we take a look at the coin here, you can see like a lot of scratches going down the coin. Just a, a lot of scratching, like somebody dug it out or something. And the fields are kind of, you know, spotty. There's a lot of hits there. But, I mean, the coin overall, it's, it's, uh, it's something that would be a very affordable 1909S. We try to sell coins that are even, you know, high tier, low tier, anything that we really can. And so this one's probably the cheapest 1909S in the market. It has all the details that you'd want. And it, uh, you know, it's still a nice coin overall. There's just some damage on it. Someone wanted to mess with it way back when, and uh, that's what happens. But you can see the S kind of popping up. It's a little bit hard to see, but yeah, nice little S pop up there. The reverse is kind of perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just those hits right on the uh, right on Liberty here, and so it's just the way it goes. It's a nice coin. Though. Up next is this 1881 Indian head scent. And when I sent this sub in, I I didn't really know what these would grade, but we sent them in econ and we paid the, the least we could. We added true views to the coins, and uh, yeah, I mean they they did pretty well actually when we got them back in. It's just something that uh, we're pretty uh, pretty proud about. We didn't think that I didn't think they would do well because I didn't know how to grade Indian head sense, but Jason believed in himself and said, "Hey, let's do it," and uh, it ended up working out. Kind of a few distracting spots here above the F and uh, right behind her eye there. It's like a, a dark spot, and you can see I can, the luster is kind of suppressed here. There's a, there's like a reddish brown that's covering uh, you know in front of the face on the face, but there's still that nice vibrancy. Um, around the rim, and I think that's where they take a lot of the grade away. It's just the luster there is a little bit lacking, um, but that's not the same for the reverse here. And uh, I'm just kind of learning a little bit as I go. But the 1908S that we showed earlier really had that full luster, full um, reddish brown that was really nice on both sides. It's just when you get when you get knocked out of gem state, I think it's just because the luster right here is really suppressed on the coin. And uh, that's why I think it graded MS64 Red Brown. Still a nice coin, still a lot of underlying luster, but just nothing that's really popping out that would make it a gem state coin. Sent this in because you don't see this date too often. This is an 1868 Indian head scent. This one's graded uh, fine 15. And when you take a look at it, you know, it's just nice. A little carbon spot here, as you can see, right above the E. But we sent this one in because even in this grade, it's like an $85 coin. And, you know, I think he, like I said, he ran into like his, uh, you know, maybe it was his father's or grandfather's collection. And that's why uh, a lot of these kind of came to what, you know, came out when they came out. And, you know, I thought this one was decent enough to send in. And, you know, it's just a nice full coin. A little bit right after the Civil War. Had a little history to it. And, uh, yeah. I mean, still, pretty decent coin. If you're not spending too much on it, if you spend like, you know, five, ten bucks on a coin like that, sending it in for grading, you're still going to make, you know, 30, 40 bucks. So that's not too bad. Uh, up next, 1907. And then you had sent this one is, you know, a really common date. But like I said, paying the cheapest route, and it's a decent coin. When you take a look at the coin here, you still kind of see that really nice red burning flare around the rim here. But as we were talking about before, 
just take a look at the luster on the coin here. Completely suppressed. Nothing on the face anymore. There's a few actual spots as well. And I think that's just the environment that they were held in. And uh, that's kind of where the Min State 63 came in. A lot of just uh, a lot of brown there, and there's some red still going on around the rim, like I said. So it's a nice even keel of everything, and uh, it's a very accurate color grade. When you take a look at the reverse, the same kind of story here. These ones might have all been held in the same album, or something like that, or maybe they found the album and it was an upside down in a bookcase, and uh, you know it started to really get brown on the obverses of the coins, and so. If it was a different story, maybe they would have graded a little bit higher, like say the the spots and everything was on the reverse and then the obverse was uh, intact. The obverse really is what you're going to be looking for on a lot of these grades. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, still nice coins, but it's a shame that everything that happened to the obverse, which, you know, um, it is what it is, but it's something for you to understand over time. Um, up next is this 1893 uh, MS63 Red Brown Indian Head Scent. This one has a lot of, uh, you know, it has suppressed luster, but it doesn't really take away from the de definition of the coin. You can kind of see that the red's a little bit suppressed. It wasn't really like a fireball like the rest of them. And, you know, there's still a lot of nice detail in there. So what I'm gathering from this grade is that based on the lackluster on the red, but the really nice definition of the brown, that's what gave it that Mint State 63 red brown instead of a Mint State 64. You know, if the definition was still intact here, but the red was still really nice and vibrant. I think I could have seen a Mint State 64. But like I said, it's just something that uh, is a little bit of a balancing act and something that we should look at over time. Once again, you see the really nice looking reverse here. The red is just blazing on this one. I like this one a lot just because of the eye appeal that it has. The really nice definition on the obverse, but then the really good luster on the reverse. I think this one might have been a 64, but it's just a... It's just kind of a coin flip over time, and that's that's the way we got to look at it, you know. Up next is this nice 1881S Morgan dollar. I sent this one. Uh, my projections in this one was either Mint State 64 or Mint State 65. And when you take a look at it, luster is really nice, as we were talking about like with a lot of Morgan dollars that are from the S Mint from 1880 to 1881S kind of thing. And so when you take a look at the cheek here, the cheek here is really nice and, and nice and uh, kept clean. You see the hair here, also nice. No kind of rubbing um, on the hair. The only really major issue is this these kind of ticks down here. I think that might have been a coin roll or something like that, which does take away from the grade of the coin. But other than that, there's not too many problems in the fields. You have that envelope toning, I think, going around the rim. But still, I mean, the luster is still beaming through on the coin, and that's going to really hold up the grade. If the luster is a little bit more lacking, I could see this one easily be a Mint State 64 or a Mint State 64 Plus. When you take a look at the reverse, you still kind of see that nice luster intact here. There's a few polished lines that are a little bit hard to pick up on, but they're going to be all kind of parallel right underneath the eagle's wings. And yeah, just stunning pieces of, uh, of history here. Very happy with that one, getting really accustomed to uh, grading these coins. And uh, who knows, in the future, maybe we get them all right. <laughs> Uh, the next one, this is a, this is a 2014 Denver uh, Kennedy half dollar. The reason why uh, Tylon, which he actually sent a few coins into this order as well, the reason why we sent this coin in is because we thought this one had a chance at proof like. When you're taking a look at the fields here though, you know, this is a business strike. It does have a nice, uh, nice kind of contrast between the fields and everything. I'm trying to figure out why it didn't uh, proof like. When you flip it over, um, you can kind of see these cartwheels here, and I think that may be the problem. Uh, when you're trying to look at a pr mainly proof-like coin, you're going to want the fields to be completely black, or at least, you know, for the most part, black. I think the proof-like uh, eye appeal was really on uh, on the obverse side. I think it's just deeper mirrors, but I think on the reverse, it really just wasn't enough. I think it, this one was a pretty close margin, and I don't think there's too many proof-likes out there for these and so maybe they weren't even looking to begin with sometimes a coin like this takes multiple subs to get it right but hey maybe one day it'll be in a proof like holder all right last coin of the sub this is the 1874 indian head scent a little bit of a nicer date as well 
This is a repunch date. It's a minor variety, so I don't think it's really recognized in terms of pricing on PCGS, and so that's something you guys should realize. So, it is an interesting kind of uh, thing to have, but it's nothing really that would add a ton of value to the coin. This one's great, AU58 by uh, PCGS. It's got some nice kind of greenish toning to it. I do find that very beautiful on the coin. It just gives it a little bit of character. When you take a look at the date here. I don't know. Uh, I try to look up repunch dates and see what was going on with it, but I'm not too sure uh, what they thought. Maybe it's just the four was a little bit lower. Maybe something was just off center. I was trying to understand repunch date and uh, this kind of variety that it was, but couldn't find too much information on it. PCGS really didn't have it as uh, something that you could look out for. And so, still a pretty nice coin. When you flip it over, a lot of the AUs get kind of like this dark spotting on the reverse, it feels like. There's a little bit of dark spots that we've been seeing on a lot of the AU coins. And, you know, I still think it's a nice chocolate brown coin. And so, I think there might be some little bit of circulation here on the face. Uh, there's a little tick there by the neck. But, like I said, just a nice gorgeous coin overall. Interesting little minor variety. But, thank you guys for watching this part of the video. Let's cut it to the outro. We wanted to thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy our PCGS unboxing, if you did enjoy our tip about, you know, sending coins in with a coin dealer that might help you, um, you know, just leave a like down below. Comment your thoughts on the coins. Comment your thoughts on everything that's going on lately with the numismatic market. And subscribe if you're new. More videos every week. We'll see you guys in the next video.